Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good day to everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Zairi bin Barum from the Faculty of Mechanical and Automotive Engineering Technology, University of Malaysia, Pahang. So this video is the second lecture for the design for manufacturing and assembly courses. Uh, the topics today is uh, the selections of material and uh, process. Yeah. So for today's uh, lecture, um, for this lecture, first we will cover the material selection to primary process and then uh, the second subtopic is on the selection of appropriate processes and materials systematically using the design for manufacturing concept. Uh, the objectives of uh, selection, selecting, yeah, selecting uh, the material and the process is first uh, designers need to study the nature of the materials itself, and then uh, looks into the classifications of materials that uh, determines their applicability and also the relations between the design uh, production and also the utilizations of uh, the materials. Okay, so how about uh, classifying materials? Yeah, classifying materials in uh, manufacturing a product, uh, a raw material will be converted into a finished uh, product. You might have a various yeah various kinds of materials in in a single product yeah for example if you have a, an integrated telephone system you will have a plastics for the top and the bottom uh, cabinet you will have uh, the rubber material used for the die key and so on yeah and uh, materials uh, come under three basic categories which are metals uh, ceramics and also polymers uh, a mixture of uh, these uh, three fundamental types are uh, form of a composite. Yeah. Okay. There are two types of the classifying uh, the materials, uh, which is uh, type one. The engineering engineering materials uh, can be classified into six uh, broad families, which are metal, uh, polymer, elastomer, ceramic, uh, glass, and hybrid material. The second type of uh, materials classifications is uh, the engineering materials can be classified into two categories which are metal and also non-metal. Okay, for type 1, the classifications of engineering materials of type 1, here I show to you uh, the six different groups which are the metals, polymers, elastomers, glasses, ceramics and hybrids. Yeah, examples of metals are steel, cast iron, aluminum alloy, cuprum and also zinc alloy. Yeah, uh, kinds of polymers, for instance, the PE, PET, polyester, phenolic and also epoxy. Uh, types of elastomers, silicon, isoprene, neoprene, natural rubber and also butyl rubber. While glasses, the examples of glasses, for instance, the, the soda glass, borosilicate glass, silica glass, and also glass ceramics. And uh, the fifth group, which is the ceramics, uh, examples of ceramics are alumina, silicon carbide, silicon nitride, and also zirconia. And the hybrid kinds of material, the sandwich kind of material, composite, segmented structure, lattice, or foam. Yeah, these are six uh, groups of the materials falls under the engineering materials classification of type 1. Yeah? And for type 2, yeah, you have uh, engineering materials as, as the broad uh, group title. Yeah? So you have two types which are metal types of materials and also non-metal. So under metal, they fall the ferrous and non-ferrous. Uh, the examples of ferrous materials such as the cast iron, carbon steel, uh, alloy steel, and also stainless steel. And the non-ferrous materials are aluminium, copper, brass, bronze, zinc, magnesium, and titanium. While the non-metal materials, we have uh, organic and inorganic type of the non-metal materials. Yeah. 
Okay, we talk about the composite. Yeah, composite uh, consists of two or more phases of materials which are uh, processed separately and uh, bonded together to achieve uh, properties superior to the constituents. Yeah? Some of the uh, composite materials yeah, uh, used in the phases are uh, wood or fiber, which are homogeneous mass uh, bonded together with the epoxy, yeah? epoxy yeah? As, the, as the bonding elements. For, and the example of how uh, the composite materials has been applied such as uh, in the aircraft and also the tennis racket. Uh, we talk now about the polymer materials. Polymer materials is a compound consists of repeating units called as MERS. Yeah? MERS uh, share electrons to form a very large of the molecules, which are usually of a carbon and other elements such as oxygen and hydrogen. So further classifications of the polymer groups are thermosetting, thermoplastics, and elastomers. Yeah? The example of the polymer materials are the polytint and also the PVC. The ceramic uh, group of material is a compound, yeah? a compound which contains a metallic and non-metallic part. So the non-metal uh, can be such as oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. And the examples of the ceramics materials are like carbides, clay, silica, and aluminum. Okay, we talk now about the classifications of the organic materials. Yeah? So, the organic material, first group is the polymers. Uh, under the polymers, we have the following classifications of the thermoplastics, uh, thermoset, and also elastoma. The examples of thermoplastics materials are like the polypropylene, polyethylene, uh, polystyrene, vinyl, ABS, acrylic, and so on. And... Thermoset uh, materials, examples are like uh, phenolic, polyester, melamine, uh, uretine, and epoxy. While the elastomer materials, examples such as the rubber, butyl, silicon, fluorocarbon, uh, polysulfide, neoprene, and vitriol. Uh, there is also another group of the organic materials which uh, classified as the others. Yeah? So the examples is such as the carbon, wood, fiber, pepper, and also leather, yeah? Okay, so material selection for a product design, yeah? Material selection for product design is seek to improve uh, the following elements. So we have uh, here five basic elements to be improved, yeah? From the material selections. First is the life cycle performance of a material in an application. The second one is the design and manufacturing of a component, taking advantage of a material's characteristics. So every material has its own characteristics. So it's really important to choose the right material for your product with the right characteristics. And also to improve the properties of a material and also the structure of it, and also to synthesis and processing of the material. Yeah, this is, these are the to improve the following five basic elements that I mentioned before, yeah. And then we have, we do have uh, four methods for material selections, which are selection by analysis, selection by synthesis, selection by similarity, and also selection by inspiration, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I will explain about how is the process or the steps taken in the selection by analysis. First is the translations of the requirements. Yeah? These translations of the requirements, it is often to express the initially in non-technical terms into statement of objectives and constraint the design must meet. Yeah? So you have to translate the requirements of the design of your design first. Yeah? And then the second one is the analysis of the component for which a material is sought, identifying performance matrices and expressing these as equations that measure the performance. Yeah? The following step, the third step, is the identification from these equations that you have developed in the second step of the material properties that determine the performance. And then the last step is the screening of a database of materials and their properties, uh, eliminating those that fail to meet the constraints 
and ranking those that uh, remain by their ability to maximize the performance metrics, metrics yeah so these are the four steps involved in the selections by analysis so how to do the selection by synthesis yeah the selection by synthesis there are uh, this process is experimental and depends on experience of the designer yeah so uh, by doing the selection by synthesis it depends on your experience as the designer and also the process of you are doing the experiment with it yeah the inputs here can include the design requirements uh, expressed as features showing intentions aesthetics and also perceptions yeah i think the features that showing the intention aesthetics and perceptions is uh, uh, three different uh, things that is very important in, in the product design. Basically, this, the solutions will depend on previously solved problems that have some features common with the problem at hand. So this may be seen as a drawback since the method used past experience. Yeah, yeah sometimes uh, the, based on the documentations of the previous design, on the past experience, on the design flow of the company or your team design, you you will use yeah you will use the, the the your experience or your findings in the past experience of the design uh, to to give some things into the new design which will which which involve in this uh, material selection stage yeah it encourages a kind of cross pollination where developments in one field can be adapted for use in another. So this methodology is called the technology coupling. So the selection by synthesis is called also as a, the, the technology coupling. Huh? Okay. So we proceed with uh, another two methods of doing the material selection. The third one is the selection by similarity. So selection by similarity is a substitute material may be sought when the existing material is no longer available or fail to meet the design requirement. So it's kind of an example like uh, you have a product, you use uh, material A, and now you don't have uh, the material A anymore, so you will, you will look or find the similar materials to, to A to replace uh, the material for uh, the particular parts. So in such cases, an established material uh, can be used instead of the existing one. So because it might have the right mix of attributes and meet the design requirement. Yeah? Maybe you will need a, a further reliability test or a sort like an experimental test to confirm that the material which you found is similar to the uh, existing material which is out of stock will meet you will meet or not your design requirement yeah and then the last one is selection by inspiration yeah designers usually get their ideas from other designers colleagues and from their environment so it is called like a, a, a process of getting inspired yeah you will have inspiration sometimes from the environment when you walk outside or you you went to an exhibition yeah you look on the other designs so there is a sort of inspiration yeah so many ideas are triggered by accident perhaps by some chance encounter with someone or a situation so the encounter thus becomes inspiring and provokes a creative thinking yeah so it will stimulate uh, your mind to keep uh, thinking based on the inspirations and then uh, it's also uh, a, a good process yeah and it needs you to be to be creative yeah based on the inspiration that inspired you yeah and then such encounters can include interaction with the materials products or you know, the browsing books yeah okay so metal i think uh, we are familiar with the met with the metal so as mechanical engineers i think we deal mostly with metals yeah the property stands to be well understood and somewhat uh, forgiving material you can make small mistakes sometimes big ones and get away with poor design as a result of metals forgiving nature yeah ceramic and composite we talk about ceramic and composite so we see ceramics and composites all around us but 
they tend to be used in special applications only because of what because of the fabrication cost yeah this however is changing yeah and then plastics yeah? plastics are among the commerce most common modern material choices yeah and also you can see a lot of plastics now in use uh, in the 3d printing yeah in large volume production plastics are inexpensive plastics are very cheap for example in the using the injection molding yeah plastics are very cheap for a large volume of production so in small volume productions plastics can be an extreme extremely expensive choice due to high tooling costs yeah so again you can see that the the factors of the volume of the productions uh, determine yeah where the, the cost of using the plastics material is expensive or cheap yeah okay so there are three stages uh, to identify a material yeah first stage first uh, you list the material requirements for the design so what are the requirements uh, that you need for your design the second one you, you use the list of the characteristics given to help you in defining all the critical requirements and then you rank the requirements in important uh, sequence yeah, to the design success so you have to you have to rank the requirements yeah the second stage involves of uh, select and evaluate uh, the candidate materials that you list out or you found uh, by searching on the various handbooks and resources and then rank your candidate materials as to how well they meet the requirements and then use a decision table to identify the best choice yeah so you will have a lot of options so you have to use a decision table yeah to identify the best materials the final stage first is to choose the most economical material yeah uh, producing a product we want it to be uh, the cost of the material as low as possible and then research for material costs and production costs based upon your anticipated production run and so choose the least expensive of your best choice candidate materials yeah okay so that's all for this lecture very i think uh, quite a bit short one for the selection of material and processes process for these uh, courses i hope that uh, you enjoyed the video uh, thank you and see you again